Hi guys, I uh, hope everyone's well. I uh, hope you had a good time uh, over Easter. I hope that uh, Record Store Day was good for you and you got what you wanted for. Uh, didn't wait in line for too long. Um, I did. <laughs> uh, not very successfully, I have to admit. But uh, I did. Uh, did stand in line. But this video is not about uh, new vinyl finds. Uh, it's not about uh, Record Store Day. It's uh, another installment of uh, Now Spinning, which is just me showing, you know, stuff that I've been playing uh, in the last, you know, seven days since my last video. Um, this is number four, so I've been doing one every week. Uh, last week I did one, I think it was Wednesday, but I've, uh, because of the weekend and, you know, I've accumulated quite a few, so I don't want to just, you know, pile up in a huge 25-minute video again. I want to keep it as succinct and as, you know, uh, between 15 minutes, maybe 20 maximum. I don't want to, to, to waste too much time of people, people's time, basically. So anyway, yeah, this is now spinning. Uh, so, yeah, next week I'll have a proper, like, uh, new finds video because there are some things coming my way. And uh, I have bought some new things to show, so... So, first off, what to play in the background? Um, a rather overlooked album, I think. Uh, it, this came out in 2010. It's called ARP, uh, Softwave. Uh, it's by um, a guy by a Greek name, Alexis Petridis. Alexis Yorgopoulos, sorry, Petridis is, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, Yorgopoulos, but uh, I think he's American. Uh, so yeah, he's. Recruit, but I think he's American anyway. Came out on the small town Super Sound, and um, I guess it takes its name from the instrument, harp, and it's what you can hear in the background. It's very science, sort of cosmic synth, yeah, it's a crowd rock inspired kind of music. Um, he's, this is his first album. Um, as I said, it came out in 2010. I didn't hear much about it, to be honest, but I bumped into it on Spotify and I was like, wow, I need to find it. It was sold out everywhere. Uh, I guess it was a small run. Uh, I did manage to find a copy on uh, Rough Trade West. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy to, to get that. Uh, got it like many years ago. Many years ago. Two years ago, three years ago, or something like that. Anyway, I've shown this before. This is, Amazing, amazing stuff. He has another album out, um, uh, which I checked out, and it, it's nothing to do with this kind of sound. Um, you know, I, so I haven't haven't bought it. Anyway, um, over the weekend I went to um, we went with my my girlfriend. We uh, rented a car and drove around, you know, places around London, uh, you know, wherever it's like close. And one of the places I wanted to go was um, the White Cliffs of Dover. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to go there, and it was subconscious, is this record. And when I when we went there, I started telling my my girlfriend the story about it. And it's uh, this one. It's Twenty Jazz Fine Greats by the Throbbing Gristle. This is the reissue that came out. Two years ago, three years ago, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I think it, yeah. Anyway, it, this is this is the issue basically. And um, I was, uh, and actually, you know, I was. Uh, we, we came here, and after you know telling her the story about this album and da da da, and then I took it out, and I was like, well, why don't I give it a spin when she was away? Because I don't think that she would like it. Anyway, the reason why I I said this is that. This is the ultimate piss take album of all time, and I've said that before. Uh, in when when I was showing it, like I don't know, two years ago or something like that. Um, it's uh, first of all you have the title, Twenty Jazz Fan Greats, which I guess that it's the music that would make these guys vomit. Uh, second thing is that they all have like this uh, very nice, uh, you know, not good boy attire. Uh, for 1979, which I guess that the album was uh, released. Uh, I think it was 1979. 
Yeah, I think it was 1979, 78, 79 or something like that. And uh, yeah, and uh, you know, the, the, la the nice, you know, background and, you know, uh, Range Rover here, you know, just the symbol of, you know, wealth and, you know, being very, you know, middle class and all that kind of stuff. And um, these are the White Cliffs of Dover, basically. And actually this cliff here, this bit here is where people just jump off to commit suicide. So I guess there is um, there's a story there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I guess that, that this is what they wanted people to do, to buy this album by accident, thinking that, oh, it's 20 jazz fan greats. Look at these guys. They look really neat and very clean. So probably the music is very neat and clean. And look, they have a Range Rover. But in reality, they want them to jump off the White Cliffs of Dover. So yeah. Uh, and that's about, you know, the cover. The music is, um, it's very forward looking, it's very, uh, it takes, uh, it's not noisy, it, it, it's, you know, they're the godfathers of industrial music and their live album and their live performances were like noisy as hell. This is not a noisy album, this is more of a downbeat, I would say, uh, dark electronica of the time. I would, I would, this is this is the kind of music that I would, I would put it down to, and uh, you know it's an absolute classic. And yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't know this one, I mean, this is like you know, uber classic, 20th century music, I guess. So yeah, I've been, uh, I, I played that one. Another dark one, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, Fire, uh, without noticing, this is their latest, I think. They've been very prolific, Fire. Uh, fire is, um, there's Fire, Fire Orchestra as well. Uh, they've done quite a few albums. Uh, one of them uh, with Orem, Oren Ambarchi, who is one of my favorite um, Australian artists, drummer, multi-instrumentalist, and I've been following whatever he does. And they did one album with him, uh, which is uh, in Fire a Mouth, I can't remember, it has a hand uh, in the cover, I have it somewhere over there, I cannot go and reach it. So this is uh, this came after that, uh, this is like two albums after that actually, and uh, this is just a trio, it's not the fire orchestra, so it's there's more people playing here usually with a fire orchestra, with a fire, with fire. This is just Matt Gustafsson and uh, who else? Johan Breitling and Andreas Verlin and drums. So it's basically a saxophone, tenor saxophone, baritone saxophone by Mats Gustafsson, uh, Jordan, uh, and uh, bass, piano, and drums. And it sounds very menacing. It has this kind of um, no wave feel to it. Um, really good. I would. I would check out all of the of Fire's uh, albums. Uh, the one that I would definitely go for is the uh, bugger. It's a white one. <laughs> it has a white and, and a grey picture. I cannot remember the, the title of it, but yeah, it's just bloody amazing. It's two sides and it's like from a live recording that uh, I know that um, Anders from Stockholm was there when they were actually playing it which I'm so jealous of because A, it's a fantastic album B, I would always like to go to a, to a live gig that I'm like blown away by and then that gig comes out on LP so I can like keep it forever it's just, yeah, I'm so jealous anyway. so yeah, that's fire um, and then uh, another Trouble in Mind record uh, this is Morgan Delt uh, I've shown this like a few months ago uh, it's a fairly recent release sorry I don't know if this is a little bit too loud um, I mean, it feels a bit too loud for me uh, yeah Morgan Delt, Trouble in Mind this guy is making um, uh, my guess is because I, it doesn't have a lot of information here it's uh, produced by Morgan Delt, mastered by some guy and inside there's not much so I don't know a lot about him, uh, as I said, came out 2014, I bought it like a couple of months ago and uh, what this is about is um, pretty much like uh, um, samples 
Um, it, that's, that's how I think he's done it. He's, done, he's taken a lot of samples from 60s, uh, psychedelia and whatnot, and just put them all together, making um, psychedelic pop, very dense, very, very, very textured kind of sound. And it's just really nice, very, very lovely kind of music. And um, yeah, it's recommended, really good, really good. Do check this guy out, I, li I like him, I like him. He reminds me of another band, which whose name now, hang on one second. Hey, if I find it in like 30 seconds, yes, I did. He reminds me of what these guys are doing, Lilacs and Champagne. Uh, I couldn't remember the name. Uh, yeah, they do the same kind of thing. They have that same. Uh, yeah, this sounds more electronic. Uh, you know, from memory. Let me just pop it on. I mean, you know, why not? That's what we're here for, isn't it? This is a lovely album, by the way. Art. Uh, and yeah, so they, they sound a little bit more electronic, Lilacs and Champagne, whereas this guy, he sounds more like um, a pop, psychedelic pop album. So yeah, let me just, is it side one? Yes, side one. This came out on Mexican summer, so this is now spinning for, for real, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Listen to this. I showed another record, I'm playing another record, <laughs> whatever. So, uh, then I spun this one Dream Sequence, uh, Cosmic Eye. These are all samples, obviously, they haven't, they haven't just, you know, made that. Uh, this sounds electronic, but the concept is the same, but the output is more is pop. This is like electronic, this is just brilliant as well, really good. Um, yeah, this came out like a few months ago, last year. Anyway, Light in the Attic, uh, psychedelic, Jazz, fun, not funk, jazz, psychedelic jazz basically, uh, really good. Sometimes it's a little bit too loose, uh, but uh, yeah, really good, excellent stuff. Uh, been playing this one, a bit too loud. Been playing this one as well, uh, Sonic Boom uh, Spectrum. This is the reissue that came out from Vinylissimo. Uh, it came out like last year, I think. Maybe. Don't know. Don't know. Anyway, it comes with the the psychedelic thingy here that the spins. Psychedelic psychedelic thingy here that spin, spins as well, if I can do it, well, Groove. yeah this is the first album uh, after the dissolution of uh, Spaceman 3 and um, here you can, you can, you know, you can really sample what um, the sound that, you know, they were he was going for basically so it's a um, there's <laughs> how can I put it um, Sonic Boom obviously uh, had uh, there's yeah there's um where am I going with this I don't know uh, yeah I think that this is the better album from uh, the two Sonic Boom albums that came out he has, he's very prolific, he's done a lot of uh, 12 inches and whatnot. Uh, there are times that he sounds like uh, Spaceman 3, uh, a more mellow version of Spaceman 3, a little bit more um, closer to what uh, J Spaceman uh, did afterwards. Uh, and sometimes he's paying homage to Suicide and sounding exactly like um, the solo work from uh, 
by Alan Vega, for example. So you know, it's it, it's a really good album, very good, highly highly recommended. Uh, one of my favorites, um, you know, one of my favorite discoveries from the last, you know, when I started buying records again, is this guy, Umberto. Uh, Umberto is, uh, he's British, I think. Uh, he's quite prolific. He's done quite a few things, and this is one of his first outings. Uh, it's uh, called From the Grave. And uh, what he does is that he's paying homage to bands like um, Goblin and uh, all that scene, that Italian progressive electronic scene that did uh, soundtracks for horror movies. And that's what he's replicating here. I mean, this is the kind of sound that you get from him. And it's just fantastic. I, I love this guy. Droney, electronic, just, yeah, just fantastic really really good most of his early stuff are just two thumbs up his later output is a little bit me so and so we'll, we'll see we'll see um, we'll see where he goes with all that um, <clears throat> a band that I was playing last week uh, this is another record of theirs uh, it's uh, yeah I always <laughs> I, I'm, I'm checking because I, I wanted to say Turn of Tapestry, but it's Magic lan Lantern. <laughs> so, I don't know why. I always say, oh yeah, Turn of uh, Tapestry. No, it's not. It's it's Magic Lantern. You idiot. High Beams. Uh, their second album, uh, actually. Uh, this is a little bit uh, less, has less of an organ uh, presence, I would say. Equally good, really, really good, really strong stuff. I mean, you know, whatever they've done, it's really good. And, you know, psychedelic, improvised, uh, whatnot. Yeah. A bit on the classic side of things, classic uh, fusion, jazz, uh, yada yada yada. Absolute scorcher of an album. Total classic. Should not be, you know. In the things that I really am interested in, because I'm more into, you know, psychedelia and like raw kind of in-your-face stuff. This is very, you know, premeditated. Maybe a bit too premeditated for my tastes, but I like it. Uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra, uh, the Inner Mountain Flame. I hadn't played this for a, for a while. Uh, Absolute classic of an album. I mean, you know, I don't think that requires any kind of introductions. Um, this is the speaker's corner version of it. Um, I guess that, you know, maybe I shouldn't have bought this version and just went for an original because I think that you can find it fairly cheaply. And this is one of the albums that, you know, that deserve, uh, you know, a space in everyone's collection, I think. Anyway. Um, it just far reaching gets into many areas and can you know it can be understood by many people uh, for that wouldn't necessarily be into this kind of stuff so yeah I might have the Shino orchestra just yeah this guy McLaughlin he, he just just rips really I mean, just the guitar work is mind boggling it's just yeah um and finally, I have a few more, but uh, I'm already at 19 minutes and I don't want to continue. LFO uh, Frequencies, uh, this is like an absolute classic 90s uh, electronic album. One of the, you know, from Warp Records. This is a reissue that came out last year. I don't know if I've shown this because sometimes, you know, I buy records and I don't show them because I forget about them and because I wasn't that regular as well and, you know, Lo loads of records accumulated and I didn't actually show them so yeah frequencies absolute classic electronic album uh, from the 90s uh, yeah you you have to check it out uh, because this is like you know history in the making really uh, warp history and you know warp is just the best label for electronic music in the last 20 years so yeah.
and uh, that's it 20 minutes I don't want to go anymore I have a few more but uh, yeah I can I don't know I'll do that at another uh, in another uh, now spinning anyway I hope you enjoyed um, do leave your comments uh, I enjoy your comments uh, and, you know the interaction uh, like the video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it subscribe to the channel if you think that you know this is something that I'm interested in uh, unsubscribe to this channel if you think that this is utter rubbish and um, I'll be seeing you around